so here we are inside VS Code with a sample project. Uh, we just have this home page, and if you ignore this get data for time being, we have a very simple layout, a text, some spacing, and a button. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna simulate the scenario where you click on a button and you call an API. For the demo purpose, I have created this get data where I create a URL from the base and the endpoint. All of these informations are stored in separate file like you do in a normal project. You have a base URL, some endpoints, some secrets, client credentials. So of course you keep them in a different file. Let's see that in an action. I'm going to click on a test button and let's see what it prints. So here we have our HTTP call, demo HTTP call, which is calling the dev example.com, which is our dev environment just for demo and some API key, which belongs to the dev. And now comes the real scenario where you want to make this product live. So of course you have to go through different environments like maybe you have a staging QA environment, then you have an actual production environment which looks something like this. And the same thing you have to do for your key files also because many of the time we have different key for different environment. Now what I have done, I have commented out the dev and staging URL and instead of that I have added a production URL which works and I have to be honest, I have done that in couple of projects as well. Uh, but you know, it's a manual work. You have to maintain different branch or you have to manually check that you have commented out the right file and you have enabled the, you know, the proper environment before you make a build. It may lead to some error. Like you may forget some environment and you may uh, end up with having a different key and different URL targeting in your final build. So now comes the solution part. For instance, here I created dev.json, which contains base URL, which is pointing to the dev, right? Uh, and all the API keys, the secret, whatever I have in here, I'm going to bring all the information in a single JSON file. Okay, I think I placed the production URL. So let's correct that the dev URL, the dev key and the dev secret. Perfect. Now, similarly, I'm going to duplicate this file for staging environment, production environment, or whatever environment you have, you can create multiple files for that, right? And each file contains its own data. So now when we have all the environments created, we have to bring these values, the base URL, the API keys inside our actual dot inside our actual coding, right? So the way we do, we write string dot from environment. This is inbuilt method and you just have to provide the key name, whatever you have specified in the JSON. Make a quick note that this key, the base URL which you see on the right hand side is something which belongs to the JSON and not with the variable name base URL, right? Same thing we will do for other uh, keys also, string dot environment from API key, from secret and with that all our uh, you know, constants and APIs are now targeting the dynamic values of these files. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and give this application a run. And we don't need this, uh, you know, commented outlines anymore. We have dynamically configured uh, files. So let's give it a run and see what we get. We have the URL as empty. So there's no, uh, you know, actual HTTP call and there's no API key, which means that it's not picking up any of this environment. And the simple reason for that is we haven't specified which environment to select when we are running the application. We have to choose one of them, right? So let me show you in the terminal how to choose an environment. You have to write this simple command with the argument dart define from file. Now, don't worry, I will give you a trick also at the end, you don't have to write this all the time. So with flutter run, I'm appending one more uh, argument, which takes all the configuration from the specified file. Now let's go ahead and give it a run. Perfect. Now you can see that it's pointing to the STG example with the STG key. Perfect. So our environment is totally working fine. We just have to provide QA, uh, staging dot JSON, prod dot JSON, depending on which environment we are going to target. Cool. Now let me give you some tip. You can create a launch JSON configuration if you don't have already. 
so that you can define different arguments for different environment. If you have already created, you can click on the setting button. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave the profile mode and release mode, and we're gonna duplicate this one a couple of more times. So the idea here is to create different configuration for different environments. So let's begin with our dev environment. You can also change the name of the configuration. It doesn't have to be the project name. So I'm going to write dev staging production so that I can see that in a drop down. And here you have to specify that argument. The parameter name is args. And we are going to give the same value which we did inside flutter run args, which is dot define from file and the name of file, the path of the file actually. Now same thing we will repeat for staging and prod environment. We just have to change the name of the file. And this is one time process. You don't have to do, uh, you don't have to do that again and again. Now let's go ahead, save this file. And now if you go to the run configuration, you will see a nice drop down with different environment targets. So I'm going to target the dev environment, give it a run and automatically it should take the argument. It should run on that particular environment file. And if you click on the test button, let's see. So our URL and header is pointing to perfect dev environment. Let's also verify that on a staging environment. So I'm going to change the target, run again. And this time it should say STG example and STG key. Perfect. So our solution is working perfectly fine. But before we end the video, let's also see how to configure on Android Studio. So you have to click on this drop down, go to edit configuration and inside additional args, we will specify the same argument dot define from file and name of the file. So this is our dev configuration. Similarly, we can add another configuration. You just have to go to edit configuration, click on that plus button and choose flutter configuration. Now, again, you have to keep in mind one thing that your dart entry point should be main dot dart file. And then you specify the same dart define pointing to different files and just give them a different name. And with that, we have successfully configured all the three environments inside Android Studio. So let's go ahead and give it a run on prod because we verified staging and dev on VS Code. So I'm going to verify the prod on Android Studio. So if I click on test, you can see here it points to example.com and it uses a prod key. Perfect, isn't it? Now, one most important thing you have to remember whenever you are going to make a build for production, like you want to create IPA, app bundle or APK, which you want to make live on a store, you have to give this command manually. And it's fine because you don't make releases every single day. It's just once in a while. I hope you learned something new how to change environment in Dart language without having to worry about all those comments changing manually. You can just configure it and run that with a simple argument. Make sure to give this video a like, hit subscribe if you're new here, and you can also take a membership of this channel Codex. I will try my best to produce content on a regular basis. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.